Rivers. And if you find you're tuning into a wave, well then I don't know much about the NSA. Hello everybody. Hello friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 150. 150. What's our topic? This is to reincarnate or not to reincarnate. Is the question. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> yes, sir, it is. That is a personal question. Yes, it is. Cool. That's a good one, though. Yes. Well, before we do, anything you want to share from last week? Yeah, last week we did Awakening the Real You, and we got so many compliments on that episode, and I just wanted to say thank you for, um, I always thank our discussion group, but thank you again and for everybody that said that they enjoyed this episode because... You know, we're on episode 150, but it's still new. Yeah. It still feels new, and it feels like we're trying to still find our niche and and where, you know, what people want to hear. And so that when we get those kind of compliments, it helps for me to know what they like more in the way that the episode flows as well, because I try different things, and mm -hmm. maybe people don't notice, but I, I do when they reach out. Then I go, okay, I know that. That this is good. This is something to keep doing. So, right. so we appreciate that. So Absolutely. I wanted to say thank you to everybody for that. Muchos gracias. Yes. And then um, I wanted to tell a quick little story because one of the reasons that I had shared my story about finding my dad and my, my sister and brother is because I like to motivate people to do things like this. Mm -hmm. And one of my best friends from elementary school she was motivated to do this, and she reached out and found her yeah. sister and found cousins and everything. So, And she did the same kind of thing through uh, Ancestry or whatever. We're going to go hiking on Sunday, so I'll get the full story from her. But um, I just thought that I should share that because these kinds of stories, they really do motivate people. So <clears throat> share. When you have these kinds of things, share with others. It, it, yeah. it does. It, it motivates them to do things that, um, yeah, they never thought they would do. So, That's cool. So congratulations her. to Christine as yes. well. I don't know if she listens, but I wanted to tell congratulations. her congratulations. And then we answer two questions every week. Yeah. Um, so the first one. So last week, one of the questions that we answered was from um, my brother-in-law, Jared. And he had said that his mother was a skeptic about psychics when she died. And so he was wondering if she would still feel the same way. Um, or before she died, she felt that way after she died. Right. And so um, they thanked us for answering that question. And then he also had a follow up and he asked, can a spirit choose to not come through? Like, can they be stubborn? Can they say, no, I'm not going to talk to this person or whatever. So I thought that was a great follow up yeah. question to answer. Um, you know, stu um, <clears throat> spirits are 100 percent love. And so they're never going to be stubborn to not come through if they are stubborn. It's because that was their personality and they're showing me that that's their personality. And then they would come through and tell me that mm. they would might be stubborn at first, you know, to show that that's what they were like. But that's not really what spirits are like. <laughs> they're pure love. And so they will absolutely come through. And um, I, I've never personally reached out to a spirit that hasn't come through. Right. Like I hear that that does happen, but it's never happened to me. So I don't know. <laughs> But I, I believe that they, um, like, let's say that one didn't for whatever reason. It might be because you're not ready to hear what they have to deliver. Mm. Sometimes I have other spirits that will, like, um, will be going to talk to one and another one will come in and, like, sidetrack right. us, you know, because right. they have a, a message that they want to deliver or whatever. Right. Um, but usually, yeah. Another example, too, it was people that you've contacted that have passed recently. Yes. That their energy is lower because they're resting. Yeah. So they're not real interactive. Yes, and absolutely. And their answers aren't elaborate. Yeah. It, actually, Kathy, one of our listeners, she, <clears throat> she lost a friend. And so sorry, Kathy. She's lost, um, she lost her father earlier. Oh, man. Uh, I think it was, yeah, earlier this year as well. So, so she's had a lot. And she wanted to communicate with him. And I said, you know what? We need to give him some time. Yeah. Because they do need to settle in and adjust. And... It's just like, you know, imagine coming home from a trip or something and you get home and you want to you want to settle in. That's home to them. And yeah. so they're kind of, you know, getting back in the swing of things. And so we have to give them a little bit of time. Yeah. But, yeah, that is one reason why, too, they might not come through or, or the energy might be, you know, 
um, not as easy. Like what it feels like for me is with a spirit that's been there for a while, I can stay in a conversation with them. Yeah. But with one that's just recently got there, they seem to come and go. I have to like bring their focus back. And that's not normal. So I know I should probably just leave them alone when they're right. doing when it's like that. So, yeah. So I hope that that answered your question, Jared. Thank you for the follow Thanks, up Jared. question. Yes. And then Crystal, we are going to answer one of her questions and do a reading for Crystal today. And I did not plan that. I I picked the question from Crystal and then went to do the reading and picked that reading. And I was like, Crystal, huh? Well, okay. It works out. Theme. It works out sometimes that way and it's cute. So let's we'll stick to it. So Crystal said, I have a question about cat diets. It's such a hot topic in all of my cat groups, which is funny because you know, I don't mm. know what's going on in these groups. Okay. <laughs> when you're when you've communicated with pets along your journey, do domesticated cats have a preference? There's always a debate with wet versus kibble versus raw. And to be honest, it makes my brain overwhelmed. Just wondering if you've gained any personal insight from the little beings you've communicated with. And that's a really good question. And I love questions like that because I want to take people's focus off of that it's an animal. And and if you were going to ask people that question, if you were going to <clears throat> take a poll from people, what do you like the most? You would probably get a, distribu- a distribution of what people like. It wouldn't be everybody would like the same thing. And cats are the same way. So you have some cats that might like wet, some that might like raw, some that might like dry, some that might like a combination. It's a lot of times based on what they're raised with. I get a lot of people that rescue animals, especially cats, and those cats want like crap food. Yeah. You know, they they crave it and they don't want to eat the high quality stuff. It's kind of I compare like mm. like friskies and that kind of stuff to McDonald's. And then if you have, you know, the higher quality stuff that you're having better quality food. But that stuff that McDonald's, that stuff that's bad for you, it really does like I don't know that. I mean, I've always had a problem with food myself. So I know you crave that sometimes right. you're like, oh, that that bad food that tastes good, even though it's so bad for me. Well, the cats don't know it's bad for them. They just know it tastes good and that's what they're used to. So I don't think that you can say all cats like one thing or they prefer one thing more. It's going to be very individualized. One thing that does drive me crazy is that vets tend to recommend dry uh, wet food more for cats than dry. Hmm. And that's okay, but I think that there should be a combination. Not necessarily because that's what they want, but because the wet food doesn't get the tartar off of their teeth. Yeah. And cats don't sit around chewing on bones like dogs do. True. So w- how else are you supposed to get the tartar off of the teeth? Yeah. So I sometimes cringe when people say they only feed wet food, but I, I would definitely suggest giving your cats a variety wet and dry they need the wet for the moisture for um, the hairballs for their skin for the same reasons that we need the moisture in our food we should give them a variety of things even fresh foods tuna even i had one pet sitting client that used to give their cats um what was it canned oysters is that what it is it oysters? I don't know. Some kind of stinky fish. And every morning when I would go there, I'd have to open the stinky <laughs> fish. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> but the cat loved it, you know. That's so I-, I tell people just feed what they like, you know, for the most part. I mean, you want it to be healthy, of course. But, you know, even yeah. if you have those cats that are rescues that really like that crap food, maybe give it to them every once in a while. Right. It's not going to hurt them. I mean, long term, if you were feeding it over long term, maybe. But. I've even, but I've seen a lot of cats live to be like 20 that have been fed nothing but friskies their entire lives or any of those foods that are on that level. Yeah. So I don't know what it is anymore, to be honest with you, what the right, the right thing is with the food. But yeah, yeah, that's my answer to that question. The long version. All right. So, so there's that for Crystal. Hope that answered your question. Thank you, Crystal. And then also for Crystal, her reading. She said, this is my cousin, Aaron. He is on the other side now. I tried to communicate with him and tell him why I couldn't attend his service. Does he understand why I made that choice? So let's talk to Aaron. Aaron was very young. Yeah. Died very young. Okay. This is a heavy... um, energy which to me means this could be relatively fresh because i'm not picking up the energy from like 
like him, like he's depressed. I pick up the energy from the people and a lot of times over time that doesn't feel as heavy because we've dealt with the grief more and this feels very heavy to me. Um, also very sudden, which will also leave that heavy feeling. That's what on I was things. thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, very sudden and unnecessary. Um He doesn't want you to hold on to any of the grief. This has to be recent because if it's not, he's still like in a resting stage is what it feels like to me. He's this kind of energy to me that's coming and going. So either he's, it's a new, and I should have asked her this. He's either a new spirit there, like within the last maybe six months, but I think even more recent than that. Or he's really, really working on himself because what happens is the energy come and goes. I have to focus on this picture more so than with, a spirit that's been there longer, like my mom that's been there 18 years, you know, she, a psychic might not need that where this, I feel like I have to keep going back to him to check in. Um, he has a great sense of humor. And when I do pull him back in, it seems like that's what he starts with is the, um, don't take, don't take life too seriously. He says he is learning a lot. He, he is definitely in a learning stage here. Um, more so than resting is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like his life here, not that it was wasted, but that he didn't accomplish the things that he was supposed to accomplish by this time in his life. And so that was one of the reasons why he was taken so young was it was like, um, we do have that control ourselves to decide when it is our time. So it's not like God said, okay, you're done here. He actually made this decision himself that he was done, that he wanted to start over, even though that may not seem like in life, that's what was going on. Um, That's what happened. He needed the chance to start over. There was something majorly missed uh, this time around that he needed this, this, um, you know, we come here for the lessons and the karma and it just wasn't happening for him. So it was a case of having to uh, restart, start over. So he's in this learning stage now about what it was that he didn't get right this time and how he can make it right the next time. Um, Later on, he'll go about helping people. And we're going to talk about reincarnation today. Obviously, that's our topic. So I'll come back to this a little bit because what he's telling me actually is that he plans to reincarnate sooner rather than later, which is interesting. Hmm. So we'll talk more about that later. But um, but one thing he's telling me that he does, he wants you to know is to any any guilt that you have of not being able to be there for the service to let it go, um, as well as other guilt that you have about not being in his life more or um, what he's telling me is that, um, yeah, that you're kind of feeling like you should have been more interactive with him. He's showing me flashes of his life that you're having regrets for, that I should have been there more for this. I should have talked to him more through that. Um, And he doesn't want you to have any of those regrets because he doesn't have those. The things that, um, I mean, he has regrets, you know, obvious, well, they're not regrets, but he has things that he wishes he could change, but he realizes that the things that happen in his life are his own doing. They're not your doing and that he should have been different and that doesn't have anything to do with you, if that makes sense. Like, it wasn't your fault is what he's saying. Um, So he wants you to let go of all of that guilt and know that he loves you unconditionally as soul family um, and nothing will ever change that. And when he is done with a lot of this learning that he is doing, he hopes that we can connect back again so that he can tell her more. So we'll have to do that. That's cool. So, yes. So thank you so much for that, Crystal. Appreciate it. Yes, um, thanks, Crystal. And, and, I, Aaron. and Aaron, yeah. I know that those those can be really tough, you know, when we're trying to keep that energy here. And yeah. I feel them, him trying to leave. And I'm like, no, wait, <clears throat> come back. Let me just finish this real quick. Yeah. It's interesting the way the energy works. So, mm-hmm. so that is, uh, that's what I got for you. Okay. Yay. All right, then. Episode 150, to reincarnate or not to reincarnate. We also did an episode when we very first started doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Episode 16 is reincarnation. I wish I would have listened back to it. I didn't even think about it until today. (laughs) Because, like, some of these earlier episodes, too, I know I'm going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yes. Well, (laughs) you know, we're learning. Yes, exactly. This is is a lifetime of learning. It is. You know? It is. And we have definitely learned a lot from episode 16. Um, You know, 
all of these things, people think that when you're a psychic, you're just filled with unlimited knowledge. And that's not really what happens at all. I have to try and figure things out myself. I have to um, explore them just like anybody else does. So the answers to the reincarnation, they don't just come to me right away. I have to learn these things. And there's still things that I'm learning and, and things we're learning and things that we're opening our eyes to. But one of the biggest things about reincarnation is nobody really knows for sure. No. Like we're all just kind of like hypothesizing what we feel and mm -hmm. what we see. And it's hard because most of the times the, the spirits aren't like, let me sit you down and tell you exactly what's going on here. Yeah. I don't have that happen. I have, I'm going to put this together for me and then I feel what's right. And I go with that or a spirit will confirm to me, yes, that's right. right. But when I'm wrong, most of the time they don't say eh, wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, well, it's like explore more. Yeah. Just keep going. You know, you have to keep exploring. Well, the title of the sh our show is Philosophy Chatter. Yes. And it's philosophy. It's a theory. It's our belief. And we're trying to talk about things that put our mind in awe. We're trying to talk about some of the things that are maybe tough to talk about, like death. Yeah. Um, or you know, whatever. Uh, but engaging people. Yeah. Because I know if out of 7 billion people on this planet, if my mind is thinking some of these things, there's got to be other people out there. Oh, yeah. That ponder the same types of questions. That's our demographic. Yeah. Yep. That's our listeners. We know that a lot of you have these same questions that we do. And we're not experts and we're not here to necessarily answer all these questions like teachers. We're here to, like you said, chat about them, to discuss them, to try and figure out what is actually going on because we don't know for sure. Right. Um, uh, the definition, so you know, of reincarnation is the rebirth of a soul in a new body. If you want to expand on that a little bit more, another <clears throat> definition that I found is... It's religious or philosophical belief that the soul or spirit after biological death begins a new life in a new body. Basically, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. This whole thing, at least, and again, we'll say this, this is our belief, okay? Um, this is a cycle. When death is not death, it's not the end. Uh -oh. It's just the beginning yeah. or a part of the cycle. There's no end and no beginning to the cycle of right. death, life what's in between it's all a process and it's different for everybody for everybody yeah i mean and the essentially that belief is based on the fact that we believe we're energy mm -hmm. and that energy can't die if we are a, truly an extension of the source of the creator god whatever you want to call it then it's infinite yes yep so i asked our listeners do you believe in reincarnation and 72% said yes, 20% said not sure, and 8% said no. You know, when I, we talked about this a little bit, I think, last week, that when we first started, I didn't know what I believed either. I wasn't sure about reincarnation. It kind of sounded almost on one, one hand too good to be true. Yeah. But on the other hand, like, really? I have to do this again? Kind of, when you're taking into <laughs> scope. The, the crap that you've dealt with in yeah. this life. Yeah, it, it felt overwhelming at first. It did. But then you start thinking about forever. Yeah. Forever. Think yeah. about that for a second. Like, stop and just think about infinity. Mm -hmm. You're never going to die. No. You're, this soul that's in your body is never going to die. It's always going to be a soul. It's always going to be lit. Time is different here than it is there. We don't know what time feels like there, right. but I still feel like it has to get to a point where you're like, I, I need to go back. I need to do something. I, you know, we're here to learn these lessons and to become a whole soul. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to the other side, I kind of look at it. And I said this to you um, the other day is like a video game. When you shut the video game off or you, you die in the video game and you realize what you did wrong and, or you go and you read a manual of how to, to how to do it differently the next time. And then you're like, right. okay, I'm going to play again. Right. I'm going to go back again. That's kind of how I compare it. What mm -hmm. I think of it as is like, okay, I have more knowledge now. Mm -hmm. I can beat this game this time. Kind of, right? you know, yeah, it's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of questions from listeners, and so um, we hope to answer most, if not all of them. But let me tell you a little bit, that, and this will cover some of the questions that we have, of what 
I believe and what you believe to kind of be the process that we go through. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think, again, it's different for everybody. And the reading that we did today is a good point in that. Because for me, I feel like the standard might be that when we die, we stay on the other side and we learn and we wait for our loved ones and we help the ones that are here. And what I've kind of noticed is it seems that great-grandparents aren't so much there anymore. Like I see my grandparents and my mom and, and those generations, right. but the ones that are past that, I don't connect with a lot. And I feel, so I, my personal thought on this, at least like maybe the norm, I would say, if there is a norm, is that we wait for our loved ones. Like my mom will wait for me. And after, you know, after that, maybe she'll choose to, to reincarnate or maybe she'll wait for Marina and right. Justin and my brother and Justin's kids. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows how long she'll stay? But I do feel like she'll still be there when I get there. Right. Um, but I think this is a different process for everybody. Like um, what we were talking about in this reading earlier today with um, with Aaron. Sorry, I forgot his name. Um with Aaron, I feel like he's going to reincarnate back faster. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't hear that a whole lot. I hear most of the time, no, I'm going to wait for my loved ones. But I feel like he didn't learn some of the lessons that he felt like he should have learned already. Yeah. And so he wants to come back faster. So there's really not like a set thing. Like we can do pretty much whatever we want is what I feel like. Mm -hmm. I know there's some religions that say, and I'm not sure exactly which ones, I believe Buddhism is one of them, where you die and you immediately come right back. Like, right. that's it. It's a cycle. It's, you know, death, rebirth right away. Right. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. I think that we take time there. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a, a, because we're all unique in some way that it just really depends on each soul, what exactly. they feel like they need to do. And if it's come back right away, great. If it's not, and you need time in between, um, there is no mandatory. Right. You don't have to even step into a life ever. This is true. This is a desire that we have that we need to understand. And that goes to what you were saying, I think, is that as lovely as it is over there, it is infinity. And you probably get a little bit got to keep in mind the body and everything's gone but the conscious and the awareness exists forever forever so even when you're we're all going to trip when we when we cross over because we'll realize our body's not there yeah we're but i'm know. aware mm -hmm. and i'm thinking yeah so that goes on forever yeah. you know can you imagine what it'd be like being locked in a prison cell for a 40-year sentence when your body kind of essentially is useless at that point and all there is is your mind. Yeah. You'll go a little bit crazy if you can't get out of that cell once in a while. Probably, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So, and I'm not saying souls go crazy because of this. They get bored. Well, I don't... Uh, I think they want to do things for the greater... Things, yeah. I don't. Maybe bored isn't a good word, but they want to be doing something for the greater good. Yes, absolutely. We're always trying to learn and grow and... I think, like, my belief is that the whole purpose of this is to be as close to the source or to uh -huh. God as we can get. And the only way that we can do that is by becoming a whole soul and learning and growing. And mm. that's what this is about. That's what this is for. We're not just here to sit here and do <clears throat> nothing with our lives. We're here to to deal with all of the things that come our way, to learn from them, to grow from them, to try and, you know prevent the bad things that that we do from repeating them again all of that and that's what makes us a more whole soul and can we do that on the other side can we learn to do that well maybe but there's nothing like firsthand knowledge there's mm. nothing like actually trying it yeah you know you can read all you want in books or mm -hmm. or whatever but the knowledge really comes from the hand on hands-on experience absolutely and as as hard as it may seem for a lot of us right now to say, oh, I want to come back and do this all over again. I really do believe that we say that when when we're ready. It's we want to come back. Oh, there's excitement about mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. There sure. is. Yeah. So that covers a few of the questions. Do we have a choice? We always have a choice. It's mm -hmm. always, always your choice. Um, do we know about our past lives? 
my feeling on this and what I see from spirits when I talk to them is it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier coming home from that trip where you're tired and you're adjusting back to things, but then the memories start coming back and you're like, oh yeah, that was so much fun. And you start thinking about this life and Mm -hmm. all of the things you did and going through that, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? The life review and, and all that. And then after that, you start to get the memories of everything else back, Mm -hmm. the past lives, the, this is what you went into this life to learn because you didn't learn it. And these previous lives. And I do believe that you are, can be shown whatever you want to see. You know, it's, it's like, um, here I feel like we don't have maybe that unlimited data bank or maybe we do maybe we can tap into whatever we want but there it's as easy as just saying i want i want to see this Mm -hmm. i want to go here i want to experience this again it's that easy you know i want to go back to my past life you know before this one Mm -hmm. and you will and you'll know all about it and you know that's that's how i believe it works at least yeah you can remember them in this life as well you got to you know, probably go to someone to help you do that. Yeah. Or use some type of meditative thing for yourself. In, but I've always wanted to do it to try to go learn about it now. Yes. Past life regression. Yes. To yep. see if there's something in my past lives that has affected me in this life. Yes. That I could be aware of and, and be like, oh, I could change that or I could work on that now that I know what that is. Yes. You know? It was actually one of the questions that I asked our listeners is if they had ever had a past life regression. And pretty much what this is, um, is just finding out about your past life. It can happen several ways. You can go to somebody that that this is what they're trained to do. Um, This is something that Dolores Cannon did, and we'll talk more about Dolores Cannon a little bit later. Um, But also there's other people that do this, um, you know, any kind of Um, hypnotherapist even sometimes they work on these kinds of things but there's also you can go on YouTube and there's meditations to walk you through it and that I have done I've I've had a past life regression um, with somebody else that guided me through it as well as doing the online like doing the the YouTube um, meditation myself Mm -hmm. and it was very interesting because one of the lives that I came back to was I it was war I believe it was World War II um, Pearl Harbor. And I'm not sure what side I was on, but I know I died. And so I'm pretty sure because I see Pearl Harbor that I was probably a Japanese fighter pilot would be my guess mm. because I see my death being just like impact on the earth. This is what I saw in the, in the past life regression. And I have always had this like, just, I, I don't like war. Not that anybody does. I mean, right. maybe some people do, but it's like, I don't want to watch war movies. Mm. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want, when it's like um, Veterans Day or whatever, it's like one of those holidays that feels very somber to me that I don't even want to think about it. And I never understood why. Mm. But these kinds of things, doing the past life regression, it can help us to understand why we are the way that we are in certain areas like that. Mm-hmm. Why don't you like this? Or why, you know, or do you have, um, you know, a, a fear of something? It could be because that's how you died. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that one day you should do that. I think we should find right. somebody that does like the Dolores Can- right. Cannon quantum healing. That would be cool. I would really love it. Yeah, I think it would be great. Um, but I asked our listeners about this and most of them said no, that they had never had a past life regression. Um, but a couple of them did. And actually, Shirley said that she went through it. I think she went through it herself. Let's read what she says. But it sounds like it was something that she kind of remembers herself. She mm. said, I remember very clearly being about five years old in what appeared to be 1800s or early 1900s laying in a hospital bed that was circa 1900s with all the beds lined up side by side. There were other children in some of the beds, the nurses dressed in period uniforms. I remember rising up out of my body, floating out of the door at the end of the long line of beds and looking to the right, I saw the nurses station. I thought, this is not where I want to go. I looked to the left, I saw a door with a bright white light coming through. I felt as if I could go into there When I did, I saw the most beautiful blue water, more white light, and I floated above the water, and the white light stayed around me. I saw other children down below waving at me. It was very peaceful and a loving feeling. I can't forget it. (laughs) That's interesting. Yeah, for sure. 
And then um, Lori said, no, it makes me nervous to think about it. I'm curious, but I think there are things I don't want to know. I think, you know, a lot of people probably feel that way. Mm -hmm. But in some areas, it can really help us. It's my understanding, too, that uh, I think in Dolores Cannon's, I want to say this, I hope I'm right, that she can allow the people to remember some of it before she like before she wakes them takes oh, them yeah. out yeah she gives them the option to say whether you want to remember this right or you want me to block this out like it's been yes and that's interesting because i actually sometimes when i'm told things like my mom will say that do you want to remember this or do you want me to block it out right. so i i totally believe that you can do that with that as well <clears throat> for sure um let's talk about dolores cannon for a minute because we did have somebody that that mentioned her and you had been listening to convoluted universe part two, right? Yes. Okay. So Hadley said, this is a kind of disjointed thought. Dolores Cannon's books have said things about people's souls existing as rocks or wind in order to learn certain lessons in that lifetime, Mm. or that some beings have lived other lives as high level interdimensional beings on other planets on the other side of the universe. Mm -hmm. But others have said that animal souls and human souls are totally different and that an animal wouldn't ever reincarnate as a human. I guess the question is, where do these two schools of thought come from and what do you and others think? Hmm. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. It it is ironic because I said to you about two days before, as I was working on a painting, I was listening to Convoluted Universe Book 2, and this topic came up yeah. about spirits and our infinity, you know. So what are we doing for infinity? And like they said, well, some people, uh, you know, some souls go in. Actually, it wasn't some. I believe it was all. Have to have the experience of everything in order to really understand. Mm. But I will say as a disclaimer that in some of Dolores's books, there are conflicting testimonies mm. from spirits that she's connecting with or past life regressions that she's doing. There are conflicting testimonies on the same subject on same subject matter. Yeah. I don't take that as, oh, this is a liar, this is baloney. You've got to realize too that she's connecting with a particular spirit, mm-hmm. with somebody that's under hypnosis. The spirit probably has the most to do with this situation, that the one that she's connecting to. So what is their knowledge, their level? Where are they at right. in their journey? Right. They not, may not be privy to yeah. certain information or they're just not there yet in their learning process to know all of it. And mm-hmm. some of them will even say, I'm not really sure, but this is what I think. Right, yeah. Or what I feel what I about feel, it. Yeah. So do I think that that's true? Well, they made a good point in Convoluted Universe Book 2 about this, is like considering that when the Earth was first created and it's hot and it's cooling down and there's it's not really um, conducive to life at, at any point, you know? Mm. So what do the spirits and the souls do? Besides being on other planets and other galaxies and even other universes, which I absolutely believe. Yes. Absolutely. I have done a regression meditation with you yeah. on my own and uh, with you, but we did together. And I got that I was from another planet. Yeah. I was a different being. And I tried to draw a picture of what I saw. So I do believe that. The, the thing about rocks and trees, I was sort of like, wow, that's... I didn't really think about that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So this was kind of even information for me, Haley, Mm -hmm. like when I'm starting to think about it and thinking, well, if the earth is cooling or it's not really, you know, conducive to life at that point, what are we doing? Right. Some are in the atmosphere. Right. And they're doing jobs of the atmosphere to help cool it. Some are actually rocks, learning, trees, whatever. It's a different energy. Yeah. But what the other side, what I gather from what the other side is sharing, that everything is as alive as we are. Yeah. It's just their frequency and the vibration that they exist at is different. Right. It's still an energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
this is a topic that, you know, when you, uh, you did, you came to me a couple of days and were telling me about this mm-hmm. before Hadley uh, posted this. So I was already like, whoa, okay, we'll, we'll have to talk about this. But it opened my eyes a little bit because, like, I'm not really sure how I feel about all that, about the rocks and, the, you know, everything. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I guess where, for me, it doesn't make sense is that when I talk to an animal, <clears throat> like a dog, like one of our dogs laying here, and I try and get in there and see if there's past lives that are people, humans. Mm. I don't get that. I don't feel that. I right. feel like that energy that they have, that their soul wouldn't like when I when I see it with my eyes closed. Right. I literally see that soul not being enough to power a human um, from an animal. So. But again, we all interpret things differently. And that's why we don't know the answers to this. Because what I'm seeing, I may be interpreting wrong. Mm. I don't know. I will say that I I know from experience that a spirit soul can pretty much get into anything that it wants. Mm. When you see an animal doing something weird, it's very possible that a human spirit has commandeered the body of that animal. Mm -hmm. We had a dragonfly that literally was in our backyard pacing back and forth and back and forth for a long time. I truly believe that that was one of the spirits that's around us doing that, um, getting our attention. Those are the types of things that I'm talking about. Uh, Can it be done with weather and plants? I'm sure it can. There's so much that we don't know and that we can't possibly comprehend. This universe is so much greater than any of us even can imagine. Mm -hmm. So like these books, Convoluted Universe, there's so much in them that makes my brain want to explode. But at the same time, there's no reason for me to believe it's not possible. No. I mean, Dolores herself says the, these books in particular will bend your brain like a pretzel. Yeah. And they do. Even though they're broken in chapters, you know, broken up in chapters and subject matter, they still bounce around a lot. Yeah. Because with each of these readings, these regressions she's doing and these, uh, you know, conversations with the other side, um, they're covering a lot of information. Mm-hmm. And one thing kind of ties to another. So they it is you feel like I walk away after listening to it for two hours, maybe at a time. And I'll only remember certain things that pop out. Yep. Even though there's so much information that they've shared. Yeah. I need the Cliff Notes version. It gets to be a lot. Like, I love Dolores Cannon, and I would highly recommend, if you're like me and you can't concentrate well, yeah. like, I can't stay focused on her books. As much as I would love to, like, I really need you to, to just give me the Cliff Notes. Right. Um, but I would suggest going on YouTube and watching some of her videos. Yeah, because has cool videos. Mm-hmm, because in the books, she really, it's like dialogue. She's talking um, through, you know, the person she has hypnotized. There's a spirit there or somebody there. And there, it just gets confusing for me. So, um, but you, yeah, YouTube videos, the Dolores Cannon ones, you can yeah. find a lot of them there. Um, but she's she's an amazing person and yeah. definitely somebody that, to our listeners that don't know who she is, that I would suggest looking up. Um, probably, I would say, if you're starting out with her, um Five Lives Remembered yeah. or Between Death and Life are the best books to start with, don't you think? Yes, I, w- I would definitely start with those. Yeah. Get, it'll g- at least give you an idea of what the premise is of what she's doing because Dolores herself, other than being a unique soul like all of us, she was really nothing. There was nothing spectacular no. of what she was doing. She calls herself a reporter. Yeah. And all she did was learn this process of the hypno- you know the hypnotism through her husband who did it for the military mm-hmm. and then he retired and he got in a bad accident and so that caused a lot of change in her life and she decided to pick up where kind of he left off but take it a little further yeah and she learned how to master this hypnot- regression hypnot- hypnotist regression stuff but all she's doing is just reporting what's being said yeah She's asking questions. Yeah. And as she gets more into it, her mind gets more full of questions. Oh, yeah. That's what I love about Me too. If you watch her videos, she's like this cute old love lady. Her. And she's really soft. But there's this absolute utter confidence. Yeah. That what she's saying could not be false. Right. 
And even though herself is going, I know, I know it's hard to, <laughs> it's, it's bending my mind too, but this is what they're saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're saying it, you know, and she's trying to ask, not in tricky ways, but she does get clever with them to try to get, to see if there's any slip up or mistake of what's being yeah. shared. Oh yeah. She tests them. And she does. She tests them. Yep. And I got to say, it's just incredible. It is. It is. I am so thankful that I came across that woman. Me too. And it was really weird when things like that, that this happen. they always happen for a reason. I actually, I think what happened is I sent you a meditation, meditation and then the, that video led to Dolores yeah. Cannon. And th yeah, when those things happen, they happen for a reason because oh, yeah. she's, I, I would say that in the spiritual community, she's probably my number one mentor. I miss, I wish that I could have met her. Oh, I do too. And when I watch videos of her, I go, I hope that that's me at her age, that I can sit there and I can help people <clears throat> the same way. I mean, differently because I'm not doing the right. past life regression, but I just love that she sits there and she's, like you said, she's so into it and she feels it and right. she believes it and, you know, but it's all so exciting to her. Like, yeah. That's the way I talk about it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet her on the other side yep. and be in the presence of her energy. Yeah. Because I know it's much greater than what she did in this life. Oh, yeah. she's. There's she's a reason crazy. she came into this life, and that was to start opening people's minds. Oh, yeah. To help. The spiritual community wouldn't be the same without her. I mean, there's other sure. people that do great work, but I mean, there's just something really unique about her. There is. Yes, I totally agree. Um, okay, so let's see. I want to read this question from Sunshine. She says, funny you ask for questions because I have a question I have been <laughs> chewing on but nervous to ask for PC reasons and it's met with love completely. I live in Portland, Oregon, and we're really big on inclusion and accepting everyone for who they are, which I love. My question is, since our souls don't have a gender on the other side, and we are all basically one, is it possible the reason we have so many people in the LGBTQ community is because we have been other genders in past lives? Like part of us still feels connected to the past life that was a man, and mm -hmm. that's why people want to transition from their woman body or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Or people don't care the gender of the person they fall in love with because <clears throat> it's a soul they love not the gender. All my LGBTQ plus friends are also spiritual, so maybe they see us on a higher level. We are more than bodies. Right. I am sure some people, it's their choice for other reasons, but I wonder if this could be why love is love. That's great. Yeah. I love your name, Sunshine. I know, isn't <laughs> That's it? That's nice? so cool. Yeah. Um, I think for one thing, I'm pretty sure that in science, we've proven that in every man, there's a little bit of estrogen along oh, with yeah. testosterone oh, and yeah. vice versa with the woman. Yeah. I think that's science's way of showing us like the secret. Like it's, it's like a hint of saying, yeah, you, you are both. Right. And it doesn't matter what it is you're attracted to. You have the essence of both in yeah. you. Right. So you could be one or the other, whether you have that, part yeah. you know the genital part or not yeah it, it could absolutely have something to do with our past lives that we remember what it's like to be <clears throat> the other sex um i also believe that it is that connection to the other side however it is that you feel it that we do like you said recognize that we are genderless on the other side yeah. when i connect to an animal that's passed a lot of times i will ask the person if the animal was male or female, because you can't tell a lot of times because it is genderless. The right. soul is genderless. Um, and I am a huge believer, Sunshine, in that love is love and that we are meant, we did this wrong. This whole mm -hmm. thing was done wrong from the right. beginning. This whole Adam and Eve thing. I'm sorry if there's anybody that, you yeah. know, listening that's like, oh, Adam and Eve, they're my heroes. Um, yeah. That was, that was a... We mess the whole thing if you up. Will. Yeah, my true belief is that we have genders because of reproductive reasons. Okay, mm -hmm. but like, let's take koalas for example. Koalas, male and female koalas, only come together to breed, and then the males go off and they're by themselves, and the females are in packs where they've actually exhibited lesbian 
actions. Mm -hmm. They so it looks like they're only with the men to breed, and then they're with the girls for the the love and the attention. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. From what I see, I feel like we were supposed to do whatever we wanted. Haven't they shown that with dolphins too? That they'll interact in a way with the same. Oh, dolphins! Yeah, dolphins act out homosexually. Absolutely. yeah, they're one of the only animals that actually have sex for pleasure, that it's not just about reproduction. And that should tell us something else, too, that these animals, they don't have sex for pleasure. Right. It's just to bring in the babies. A lot of them are solitary completely. Yeah. It's not about, you know, relationships. Mm. Um, we have somehow made this bad that, you know, we're not supposed to have love right. with somebody of the same sex. And I, I really, truly believe we went completely wrong there in this whole human oh, I experience. Absolutely <laughs> agree. I absolutely agree. It's like somebody drew a storyboard that we could all wrap our head around. Yeah. You know, it, it, I got to be honest, even with the Bible in reference to God, it's always he. Yeah, it's true. And Dolores made a very good point in one of her uh, videos on YouTube. You'll find it if you watch them. And she said, I got a news flash for you. God is no gender. Yep. And if he was, if anything, he'd be a female. <laughs> it's true. Because he comes from love yep. and nurturing and compassion. That's right. And this is what I have said in the past. Uh, and this kind of rose some eyebrows during election time when I said, we need females in office. Mm-hmm. We need female leaders of the world. Yep. Because they are the mothers. They are the compassionate, caring, loving. The men are the ones that want to start the baloney. It's true. It's true. It's there's too much machismo going on mm-hmm. and ego. But too much testosterone. Yeah, God is not a man. No. God is not a woman. No. God just is. And if we are parts of God, then we are both. Yes. I that's one of the reasons I stopped referring to God as God and started referring to it as universe because then I can use it instead of he or she. Right. Um, Dolores was, you know, uses God and was using he. And that's kind of confusing when you're saying that there's no, God is not he or she. So I prefer universe. <clears throat> it's, you know, gender neutral where we've put this male on God, the father, son, Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. It's genderless. It's, there's yeah. no, you know, doesn't recognize no. that. It's, it's, yeah, we've done this whole thing wrong. Yeah. And like you go to your turn to cross over my turn to cross over. We're not recognized as. Oh, Danny the man, Samantha the woman. No. You're not even recognized by your name because how many names have you had depending on how many lives you've lived? Exactly. So they wouldn't know what name to call you. Exactly. It's not based on that. Not at all. And there's no evil God (laughs) on the other side that's condemning anybody that's homosexual for what they've done. Nope. That either. That's not happening. It's You get there and it's like. Not even a part of anything, really. It's, right. you know, who you choose to love in this life doesn't, it's, that's up to you. Right. No matter what their sex is. So. It's all your review. It's yeah. a, you, you're your own judge. So think of it like a, a job, um, uh, review. Yeah. You go in and they mark the little boxes and, and they write in the comments all the things you're great at and score you at every aspect of the job. And then they'll probably write some comments about things you need to work on. Mm -hmm. And so if you like your job and you like getting your paycheck, then you walk out of that office and you realize, okay, these are the things I have to work on. Yeah. And you go about that. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. You go in your review. This is what's said, not by anybody else, but by your own, you're going to watch. You are going to watch. Yeah. Your own life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going to watch it all. Yeah. And then you decide. You check those boxes and you write those comments to yourself and you walk out and you do it again. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, Let's see. A couple other questions I want to get to. One of them is, can a spirit communicate after reincarnation? That's a great question. Um, And it's one of those things that... Oh, I get it. Get it? And I'll explain. I'm still learning this myself. So basically what this means is like, <clears throat> say that your great grandmother has reincarnated. Mm-hmm. Could I still communicate with her in a reading? I believe yeah, so. I think so. I, be- I believe, and I'm not exactly sure how it works, but that a piece of our soul is always there. Mm-hmm. Right now, a piece of you is there. And that's your higher self. That's who guides you. So 
if I try to connect to somebody that's already reincarnated, because I do connect to a lot of animals that mm-hmm. have reincarnated, but with the people, what it feels like to me is just that, like, like they're new there. It's similar. It's like it's not as strong, mm-hmm. and I have to keep going back to them because it's just that right. one piece of their soul I feel that's there. With animals, there's a very distinct feeling. Um, and what I feel with them is more like their soul is mostly gone. I can ask questions. I can get the answers that I need. But I I don't have the same kind of conversations with an animal that's reincarnated. Right. So it's it's all again, it's all learning. You know, well, yeah, learning. I mean, and then, you know, there's other aspects of this whole mysterious universe that we live in. To kind of help answer that question, I go, well, let's refer to. Dolores's books about Nostradamus. Well, Nostradamus has been dead for centuries. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But she's communicating with him during life. Yeah. Now you're talking simultaneous time. Right. And so gonna... I would be I would go as far to say is if your grandmother reincarnated as a, a new life and had the, the ability and wasn't afraid of this to right. com- to communicate. Not only could you communicate with them as a child in their new life but you could communicate with them as your great grandmother yes. in their current life yes the problem is we start thinking like humans and we right. forget that all of these things are possible so if this is a simulation then a part of us is always on the other side sort of guiding ourselves yes counseling with the higher ups and the people that are more wise and stronger energies and they're helping us as we do this simulation of this life, but we're split into fragments, yeah, pieces in a, in a way. Yep, that's why, like, when you have a spirit that, um, like a, a human spirit that's passed, they can be in multiple places at once mm-hmm. because the soul splits. It doesn't have to be together to be a whole soul. You know, it, it can if, split off. If we are all fragments of God, then yep. He's the proof of that. That that's yep. the proof of that, showing that we've now all split off from the source. But we're still connected to it. Yep. Um, Jonathan had brought up something really interesting in the group. And so I wanted to read this. It says, I was told that if you don't head for the light, quote unquote, when you die, you move on to a higher plane and there is no need to deal with this BS world over and over again. And I said, I have never (laughs) heard that. And he said, I was told the warm light is a ruse to encourage reincarnation where it all starts up again. By ignoring it, you are allowed to move on to a higher plane because you have already shed- shedded your ego by doing so. So, again, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I can't yeah. say that he's wrong. But I will tell you that from what the <laughs> spirit world has shown me, that that's not the case at all. This white light that we walk into is different for everybody. Sometimes right. there's not even a white light. Sometimes it's just boom and you're there and you're in a place with your loved ones. It's it's different for everybody. Right. Um, so, um, yeah. Most of the stories that, that Dolores has written about where there's any reference to that white light, my understanding is, is it's completely infectious and unavoidable. Right. You are drawn to it like a moth to a flame. Right. Think of it as a magnet in a paper clip. It just is drawn. Yep. And you're going to go there. That's not... That's not ego-based. It takes a long time to actually get to the light. Yeah. The light is so big and, and immense, you bask in the light. Yes. But the source of the light is much further away yes. than it appears like because you're standing in light. Right. But your your instinctive or spiritual intuition and goal is to get as close to that light as you can. Right. Exactly. So you keep, you know, hopefully in your journey and reincarnation that each time you come back, you're a little bit closer. Right. That's the goal. Right. Yes. And you will eventually reach there. How long does that take? Well, none of us really know. I'm assuming it depends on you as the individual. Right. Dolores also puts a very good analogy in. Think of it as school, that you cannot go on to the fourth grade until you've passed the third grade. There is no limitations on how many times that you have to take the third grade. Right. You could take it as many times as you want. Yep. But you cannot go to the fourth grade until you've passed the third grade. 
That's right. Absolutely. So it's all just motivation. Right. Spiritual motivation. Absolutely. That's all this is, really. Yeah. This is that's all this is about is wanting to be a whole soul and wanting mm-hmm. to be closer to the source. And it's not ego based. It's love based. It's mm-hmm. all of its love based. Um, one of the things that I heard and then we'll finish up the episode with this is um, how do you know this? How do we know this information? Like there's got to be people listening right now that are like, but how do you know this? OK, well, first of all, like we said at the beginning, it's it is our opinion. OK, but one of the things that happens when we do this, these episodes, and I, I think we've talked about this before, is that honestly, we get taken over a lot of times. We feel like we're channeling, and I know that my mom talks through me. Yeah. And so sometimes I say things that I'm like, where's this coming from? Right. And I realize that this is the other side talking through me to mm-hmm. share this information with our listeners. And you do the same thing, whether right. you recognize it or not, you right. do. I see it. I, I see like when we have these conversations and you're not totally sure on things, and then we get into these episodes and, and you feel it. You mm-hmm. feel them talking through you. And right. so we're not just sitting here talking bullshit. We're talking about what is being spoken through us, mm. what the other side wants our listeners to know. Right. That happens to me in every episode. Yeah, we don't, again, we don't have PhDs. We're not doctors. Nope. We're not even, even scientists. Don't know this, we don't have any credential that says we know what we're talking about. Right. I have life experience um, and things that I look at and I can sort of put on a scale, if you will. Mm-hmm. I have like this mental scale. It's my, it's my intuition. It's my spirit. Yes. And I question with my spirit what feels right, not what looks right. Right. What feels right. Yep. And when I put some of these topics onto the scale, I sit with them. Yes. And it may be a day, an, you know, an hour, a week, a month. Whatever it takes, I sit with them and I let my soul or my spirit tell me what the truth is. That's right. I followed certain paths that I thought were true only to find out that they're not exactly true. Mm -hmm. So, again, we don't we don't really know. I'm sitting with it myself and making up my own mind. Exactly. I can't tell you as a listener or anybody on the street. You should listen to what I have to say. It's the truth. And that's what I really loved about Dolores's presentation. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like going and hearing a sermon that was being shoved down your throat. Right. It was simply reporting information, questions she asked, and the responses to those questions yep. that made me want to know more questions. And I'm like, and damn it, she just asked a question I wanted to know. <laughs> yep. And she keeps going and going and going. And, and those are the types of things that I grew up wondering. Mm-hmm. And why is it just so black and white and, you know, yep. in this, in a book for everybody. And that's, I'm supposed to be sold on that. Right. No. I No, I don't think that's the case. But how we know this or believe this ourselves i wish i could answer that for you yeah but i do believe that they samantha's right they they come to us and they share through us and we're human yeah okay so we doubt life and some of this stuff sometimes in our own kind of pity parties Mm -hmm. at moments not a lot but we're still human yeah just like when jesus had to go into the garden the night before he's going to be crucified and he's crying and begging asking could there be any other way besides this? Because I'm I'm a little scared. Right. We're talking about what what they call the Son of God. Right. You know, he was a mortal that came re- that incarnated into a life to do something great and to show the world something. But he was still human. Yes. And he was scared, mm-hmm. and he had to face that. Yep. We we get scared and uncertain too. The more I go back internally with those types of questions, it's I just listen to it. I find like the warm place. Yep. There's something warmth about warm about that information. Yep. And then other information will seem kind of cold and distant. Yeah. And I know that's not truth. Right. Yep. I agree. So so there you have it. You got to search yourself. You do. Yeah. yeah. It really is all about trusting your intuition and 
like I said at the beginning <clears throat> of my spiritual journey, I wasn't sure about reincarnation, mm -hmm. but it's really something that I've learned and have grown into, and I understand it more and more now. And who was the person that asked that qu last question? I'm sorry, um, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan, you know, if you're at a point where you're uncertain and you don't know what to believe, ask the universe to show you. Yes. Put out the signs. Yes. Give me some shape of some color. Start showing me this yep. on a regular. And if it's the yes, show me this shape, this color. If it's no, show me this shape or this color. And it could be a number, a color, a shape, whatever. It could be lots of things. I'll actually tell you a story real quick that my sister, she's kind of opening up to all of this now. And one of the things that she's had a hard time with is hell. Mm -hmm. And so she set signs that signed to be wind chimes. And so she told me about this. She was, she was, we did like voice memos. And the voice memo, she said that she had sent, uh, set wind chimes and if she heard wind chimes it meant that there was no hell I was hearing wind chimes in the background while she was saying that and I recorded it for her and played it for her and she wow. was like at first she was like I don't know how I'm going to hear them because there's no wind here or anything and I was like well guess what mm -hmm. there sure is here and that may seem like oh that's a coincidence right. but no 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 this is what happens and, and she picked a challenging one she picked a very which challenging is, one it's like don't feel like it's too much for the universe to handle mm -hmm. by giving them something challenging to show you. Yep. Uh, and I'll use the example again, too, when we were having some things going on uh, with the band and I asked, "Yeah, show me green guitar picks. Well, I'm around four other guys uh, or three other guys that play, use guitar picks, but I, I knew what colors everybody used. And this I chose green because I knew nobody played green. Yeah. And I knew I was doubting it in my mind at first. Like, I was ah, too. I'm making this difficult enough that they're not going to be able to pull this off. <laughs> it seemed impossible. And I'll be damned. I couldn't get rid of green guitar picks after <laughs> nope. a while. They were all over the place. Yep. <laughs> and I witnessed that one. <laughs> yeah. It was even for me on my Facebook feed. They were showing up like a jade one I ended up buying for you because I was yeah. like, "It's this is too weird that there's a jade guitar pick for sale, you know, on my Facebook. Right. So never think that they can't show you with those signs because they sure can. Yeah, they can. Yep. Anything you, you want to You just got to ask. Yep. For sure. Cool. Yay. Well, that was good. I, like I feel jazzed. Too. I was tired today because we had a late night last night, but that yeah. got me all jazzed. That's what up. it does for me, too. Yeah. <laughs> afterwards, I'm like, I'm tired, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah. 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 The universe. Very good. Energy. Friends. Well, before we say goodbye to everybody, would you like to share your information? Yes, we should do that. Uh, if you would like to find out more about me, you can get me on my website at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. Or if you'd like to reach us, you can email us at spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. Very good. And what about you, sir? Uh, for my art, djonesartcollection.com. For the web, at djonesartcollection. For Instagram and Facebook. And that's it for me. We were did some tracking last night, working on some new recordings. So Yay, yeah, it sounded good. About. That's all I got. Very good. Well, we hope everybody got something out of this. That we do. Thanks so much for the participation. The questions are all really cool. Yes, we love them. If as we always. didn't get to yours, sorry, but um, I think we got to most of them. But yeah, okay, I wasn't yeah, sure. I think so. But there's always a next time. Yes, there and is. And a next topic or whatever. Yep. And keep making those suggestions because they they're great. I feel like cool. Yeah. You're kind of um, you know, answering the inquiring minds. Yes. Or not if you're answering, but you're. Per proposing answers possible answers. engaging yeah yeah that's what this is about really engagement is yes together mm -hmm. it makes it um interesting yes and fun for so. sure and thanks again everybody yep thank you so much well we hope everybody has a great week that we do and until next week peace and love